Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Talking Disney Classics podcast. And this is a show where we like to talk about Disney animated films. And today we're not really talking about a classic. We're talking about a new film to shake things up a little bit. But they are classic characters. So it's going to be fun. We're talking about the new Chippendale Rescue Rangers from 2022. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Stanford is here. Hey, how's it going? (laughs) Good. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. I'm excited to talk to you about this movie. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i mean this movie when i saw the trailers i was like oh no this is gonna be really bad and so i went into it with low expectations and maybe that helped it a little bit i don't know but i was thoroughly entertained i thought it was uh it was funny really funny and uh, i loved the animation i was just thoroughly entertained by it oh so was i yeah i, I oh, didn't good. quite know what to expect I guess I was hoping, given the talent involved, mm-hmm. that it could be funny. But I also was just thinking, you know, probably the producers at Disney that are over this, they're probably not going to let them make that, you know, be that funny. <laughs> yeah. But I was wrong. <laughs> I was surprised what they let them get away with. Because Me too. Because <laughs> traditionally, Disney has not been great at making fun of themselves. Like, right. <laughs> they've been, I don't know, just the satire has not worked out all that well. And uh, and uh, you, know, you kind of left it up to DreamWorks to take to do most of that. I mean, the only other something like this that I mean, a lot of people, of course, compare it to uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but by design, that had like a little bit of satire. But uh, but as far as like really poking fun at Disney, uh, I I think about uh, Enchanted. Actually, I think yeah, is, is exactly the one I and, think you know, of most. And Enchanted worked. I thought mm-hmm. really well. Yeah. 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 I mean, poking fun is sort of not only just Disney, but but the Disney princesses yes. poking fun at at them and and things like singing to to boost the mood and, and yes. you've got Patrick Dempsey <laughs> like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and of course, we have the sequel coming up at the end of this month. So right. that's exciting. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so I guess we should start out, of course, Chip and Dale, they're characters that have been part of Disney uh, films for a long time. Decades. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't actually get that down, but it's been since the very, very, uh, yeah, 19... near, near the very beginning. I mean, I don't know if it was like in the 1940s when Chip and Dale started, you know, yeah, I'm pulling uh, up the Wikipedia right now. Okay. Uh, so 1943, they yeah. were created Chipmunks, uh, Chip and Dale. And I think that they were, weren't they in a Donald Duck cartoon? Was that the, where their debut was or was it something? Uh, it something Pluto, else? it says. The characters oh, were first Pluto. drawn yeah. by Bill Justice and introduced in the 1943 Pluto, a short private Pluto. Okay. In, it says, in, in the short, they fight with Pluto about whether they can store their nuts in a military-based cannon. Three years later, oh, here's the one you're thinking of. Three years later, director Jack Hanna decided to use them as co-stars in Donald Duck shorts. Yeah, because it seemed like they were often in Donald Duck shorts just tormenting Donald Duck. Yeah, yeah. it says, so the director uh, says, uh, uh, Hanna says, Jack Hanna says, I believe Jerry Ger- Geronimi did a picture with two impish little chipmunks that just squeaked and chattered with a speeded up soundtrack, but no words. He used them with Pluto. I wanted to use them with the duck, but with a little more personality in them. So we decided to put words into their mouths, but speed them up so you could barely understand them. We gave them both the same personality. But something was missing. Bill Pete came up with the suggestion of making one of them a little goofball to give them two per- different personalities immediately. I saw the advantage of that and took the suggestion. So there we go. So Chip is portrayed as being safe, focused, and having a mind for logical scheming. And Dale, by contrast, is more laid back, dim-witted, and impulsive. And I would say they, they keep up with that. In this? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, with the TV series, of which I think really this movie... Focuses on completely. Is focused on. Because I th- isn't one of the complaints... I think it's one of the complaints that I've read. is like, 
wait a minute, Chip and Dale didn't just start with the TV series. You know, they they started earlier, like you know, like we were just talking about. They don't really address that in the film. Yeah, <laughs> in no, this it's, you know it's, film we're going to talk about. It's <laughs> fair. I think that they are treating Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers as basically separate characters. Yeah, yeah. But I do think you could have had a funny joke with them, like stumbling upon the old old versions of themselves yeah and being like well, where are those you know or something <laughs> like that could have been funny yes but they they didn't go that way <laughs> i know uh, bummer right yeah uh so yeah the the chippendale series uh started in 1989 and it was a part of the disney afternoon and this was not part of the Disney afternoon that I remember watching much. Maybe I saw an episode here and there. I certainly was aware of it, but I I definitely uh, was more into either Goofy or the Little Mermaid animated yeah. show. Um, and I probably watched more Nickelodeon, actually. Uh, mm-hmm. Like Maya the Bee, I remember. I remember um, the... Um, the gnome show. I can't think of the name that we would watch. Um, but I do remember watching Gargoyles. Uh, that was one. I mean, and I also loved uh, Batman, the animated series. There was all sort of, that was just a great time in the nineties for, yeah, the nineties uh, was really like this wonderful. Yeah. Saturday morning great TV, TV animation. Yeah, yeah. Disney afternoon after school. Uh, these, uh, and and we talked about it in the duck ta- when we talked about Ducktales uh, in the um, nineteen ninety uh, episode. Yeah, um, we talked about it that uh, that those a lot of those shows don't really hold up that well. Uh, they're very 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 repetitive. Ducktales is very repetitive. It's the same story, but but over and over and over again. And you've got Darkwing Duck. You've got um, just all of those shows that were in the Disney afternoon. And so I don't know how much this Chippendale Rescue Rangers, Rangers really holds up. We'd have to see. But yeah, because uh, I yeah. haven't watched an episode of that forever. I remember loving the the uh, the show's theme song. Mm-hmm. Thing. And, and then again, that gets played in this in this film too. That it was so catchy. Yeah. And and I just remember thinking it was fun that the Chippendale had some clothes put on them <laughs> like one looks like indiana jones and the other one looks like magnum pi or something mm-hmm, you know this yeah. was a white shirt and then fun supported character supporting characters mm-hmm. uh you know monterey jack gadget and, gadget and um is it zipper i think that's the uh yeah that's the fly the fly yeah so anyway i thought I remember. I don't remember watching a lot, but just being, you know, a Disney fan, just thinking, "Oh, this is cute." You know, this is this is this is fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, being not somebody who's like a diehard Chip and Dale person in any in in uh, iteration, so I might have been more forgiving than some. But uh, but I'm a big Disney fan and a big animation fan, uh, and I just loved the animation style that they went with. I mean, it, it led to a lot of jokes of these uh, this world where there's CG characters, 2D characters, and I thought it was so funny the whole idea of him having CG enhancement. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that, that was, was the best. So that was the funny. best gag, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they because he wasn't doing well at the at the comic cons. He <laughs> <laughs> and it's Dale, right? Yes, got Dale the, got yeah. the CG voice, voice by Andy Samberg. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because so Dale is the one that broke up the duo in this world. Well, they they starts out with them as becoming friends at school. They both uh, were in need of friends. And Dale tries to tell this joke about poking his eye out and every kind of falls flat. Nobody likes it. And so nobody wants to sit next to him. So he ends up sitting next to Chip. I also, I love the fact that everything in this movie is to scale. So I they're like too. little, t- they have all sizes of tables, but then they're like their little table because they're little yeah. chipmunks. That was really cute. It was cute. I find yeah. it funny. You know, they, I thought mm-hmm. they used that in a humorous, in a, in a yeah. good way. Yeah, yeah, and 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 sweet. Uh, I love stories about friendships, so that that was something that was going to appeal to me from the beginning about this movie. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the, the, you know, thematically, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, I agree. It was very appealing to me too. Mm-hmm. Are you a fan of Rachel's reviews? Do you look forward to Family Movie Night, female film critics panels, or the Talking Disney podcast? If so, please consider supporting the podcast by becoming a patron. As a patron, you get to access monthly events such as the watch alongs and Q and A's where you get to talk to stars and find out the behind the scenes of the movie making industry. And you can pick what I review for Family Movie Night or even become a guest on the podcast. Podcasts and YouTube channels are expensive and I really, really could use your help. I would so appreciate it. You also get to be a member of the Facebook group where we talk about all the films that we're seeing and we have so much fun. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies and select one of the Rachel's fan tiers. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Yeah. And I liked how they, they were able to layer the 2D animation and the CG animation and just make it feel very seamless. I yeah the overall look is great because again it could have been just a mess mm-hmm. but instead they I thought the filmmakers were really successful in in putting together all this stuff and also like what kind of weird Los Angeles is this but it's great you know that mm-hmm. just all these tunes live <laughs> you know just, you're, they're just yeah. your neighbors and driving around on the, on the street and whatever it's 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 definitely like a more integrated society than it was with new frame Roger rabbit. Mm-hmm. But, uh, uh, and, and again, not that they're necessarily going for going for that movie, but as you said, it's hard to not to compare given that, you know, tunes are living side by side with humans. Yeah. You know, and, and I think the they same. actually really were from what I read in the production, uh, that that was kind of a goal of theirs that, uh, they, uh, that they well, I mean, they started out way back 2014, wanting to do something with a reboot or a, or a live action movie. Uh, of course, Disney would. Uh, but uh, in 2019, Akiva Schaefer uh, became on became the film's director, and uh, and they got new writers, and they were going through that meta. And then it says uh, these new writers, Dan Gregor and Doug Mond that had started the new script as a spiritual successor to Who Framed Roger Rabbit, taking into account the changes in animation techniques in the four decades since Roger Rabbit had been made. They wanted to keep what they felt made Roger Rabbit successful, being that the film is not talking down to the animated characters and playing it real and the top of your intelligence. So I think it really, I think it succeeds in that. I I I do too. It really captures that sense of sort of a detective story, a mystery story. It's got some film noir moments, and that was a big part of Roger Rabbit. And so I think it, it really succeeds in that. And you've got this sort of theme of the biggest risk is not taking any risk at all throughout the the movie. And, you know, we're thinking a lot about like other attempts that have been made to do this, like with Space Jam uh new legacy and i think that the problem with that movie compared to this is that lebron james is not as good an actor as chip dale <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> you're right I mean, it's true it's not it's as true. an engaging lead character i mean no. i was nicer to that movie than some but this is a million times better than that movie because the story in that movie took itself so seriously. Yeah, they took it so seriously. It was very somber between him and his son, and his son is 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 bitter and angry, and and uh, I mean, it was just a lot. There was a lot going on in that movie. Yeah, you know, the whole Don Cheadle character. So any of the comedy really felt wedged in and not part of the tone and the feel. And same thing with the cameos; like it wasn't. Like this, they it all kind of made sense within the story that they were telling with the mystery to have these moments. Uh, and you could say maybe a few of them were a little a little much, but compared to that movie where just the tones did not work, and so it just felt kind of clunky. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad you brought that up because that was one of the really pleasant, many of the pleasant surprises in this Chippendale film. Is that? I mean, immediately I thought of Smurfs. Oh yeah, you know That's those another, horrible, another good example, hybrid Smurf movies. Mm-hmm. And 
and thinking that oh, this is what this is what you know was possibly going to happen, but then but again, no, yeah, you know they uh, they uh, they they instantly set the right tone, and then it's just got such a solid script and such a great production that it just really works mm-hmm. throughout. Rather than I'm not even sure I had one grown moment. It should be not much, <laughs> not much. Yeah, and I almost think like the hardcore Disney fan is going to appreciate this even more. Like jokes, like the that they have with Blue there that he got <laughs> his career revitalized by the live action remake. <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny, and he's like, so- "I play jazz." <laughs> Uh, I I loved the joke uh, when he sees the chipmunks, the chipmunk movies, which of course are now part of Disney, uh, and he says, "Of course they are rapping. They always have the cartoon to rap." That's <laughs> <laughs> really good. Uh, yeah. I mean, I do think the biggest laugh is came every time that they had Ugly Sonic. That was so oh, funny. Ugly Sonic. Yeah. That was so great. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to get his own TV show called Uglier Crimes. Ugly <laughs> Sonic. Uglier Crimes. <laughs> uh, because, I mean, I remember when they released that trailer for, for Ugly oh, Sonic. And I do was too. Like, what? You know, the fans just went nuts. I mean, because it looked how nothing. bad. Yeah. Had, had the human teeth, which they comment on here. Me and my human <laughs> teeth and everything. And then you see them later on in the movie. But that was, I think, the funniest joke of the whole movie. Yeah. Yeah, I agreed. Uh, so I also thought that Lumiere lighting everybody on fire was really <laughs> funny, too. That was really good. It's funny. Uh, and I forget who it was. I think it was a fictional character that tells uh, Dale that his uh, CGI enhancement was tastefully done. <laughs> uh, I mean, of course, they had some like fairly easy jokes, but they still made me laugh. Like, of course, they're going to have a Chippendale dancers joke at the beginning. <laughs> But they made it funny by having the Thomas Chippendale cabinet maker also part of that. Uh, right. <laughs> I mean, did you have a favorite joke? Oh, you know, I don't think I necessarily had a favorite joke. Yeah. Uh, but just because they were coming so so frequently and they were just so, so clever. Mm-hmm. I think... I don't know if I'd call this my favorite, but the whole thing with Sweet Pete. Right. I Where... thought it was so funny. You yeah. Know? Uh, and again, I think it could offend some Disney fans. Uh, I was talking to my cute little great niece who's who's nine mm-hmm. and who watched it. And she's darling and she's she's just a bright you know, and and a, and a good movie watcher. You know, she's 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 the, you know, her parents are raising her up right. Oh. But uh, watching this film, she she doesn't really understand satire, right? Of course, I mean she's nine, nine, you yeah. know, and and also doesn't have necessarily a lot of experience with with these 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 types of comedies and films. And so she she didn't enjoy it that much. She's just like. How dare they make you know turn Pe- my, you know Peter Pan who I love into you know this <laughs> kind of despicable. But anyway, yeah. but to me it made me laugh. I yeah. just, the way that the way that they you know positioned it within the film. And there has been some controversy about it. We'll talk about it. But but yeah, I thought that they were trying to pick a character that is beloved and you know make make him the villain and uh, and so I think. He was a, I mean, and they probably would want to pick a male character. Yeah. So what do you pick? I mean, if it's not Peter Pan from that era, because almost, I mean, I, that's a human character, because you can't pick like, like a Lady in the Tramp character. What are you going to pick? Yeah. Um, I mean. I thought it was hilarious. It worked yeah. for me. I mean, I guess you could have done like Pinocchio or something, but there's just not that many, I think, characters that would have worked in, mm-hmm. for Peter Pan. So I, I agree. I enjoyed it. But anyway, we'll talk about that in, in a second. But I liked the fact that they made uh, Chip a uh, insurance salesman. 
Yes. <laughs> that was funny. And he said, Excellent. The uh, coercive insurance. Life is the worst, which is why you need good insurance. <laughs> 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 I guess you know Rachel. Probably the thing that I that I like like the most, and we'll probably I know get more into this, but that actually it was, I think he was made for adults, you know, and that kids can enjoy it. But but yeah. I think you know, it's for for people kind of like our generation, you know, mm-hmm. that 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 grew up on some of these shows, and then and then also, but and just familiar with. The evolution of animation, yeah, and, 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 and whatnot, and 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 I I appreciated that they were doing that with Dis- on Disney Plus. You know that they yeah. that, that they were gutsy enough to make a, a movie like this that could get, again could appeal could appeal to a wide audience. Like again, you know my my cute mm-hmm. little seven year old great niece, but but or nine year old great niece, but also you know is going to make. Adults laugh yeah, hard. Because, I mean, I think even if she maybe didn't like Peter Pan, there's still, like, a really nice message about friendship and sticking up for each other. And, oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. so I think that there's enough there that kids will still enjoy it. They're still going to have a, have a blast with yeah, it. Yeah, and then the adults will be laughing at mm-hmm. <laughs> jokes. Uh, the, yeah, the bootleg machine, that was... I thought oh, really so uh, brilliant. And the idea of... It, it, that was almost like the dip. Yes, of, Exactly, Roger, Roger Rabbit. Uh, I thought I I thought the joke about Batman and ET was hilarious. Well, that's what I liked about ET. It too. Forgive me, like we, not only with ugly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 but they were also going for stuff more, you know, other cultural references outside of Disney, which mm-hmm. were funny. Which also goes back to Roger Rabbit. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so then they have uh, they meet up with Monty uh, and uh, Gadget and Skipper uh, or Gadget and Zipper have forty two kids and counting. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> and Monty gets kidnapped. Uh, Gumby is the investigator, and of course you know almost immediately that Gumby is is going to be the. Um, uh, absolutely yeah it's obvious he's going yeah. to be the the what do they call it in these things um the uh the office uh oh, not weasel i can't think of the word but anyway the uh he's going to be the one that the betrays snitch them. or the insider snitch, yeah 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 and so I mean, they would have it on every season of 24, for example. You just knew that one of the people helping Jack was going to be a, a, a was double. Was the informant or whatever, informant, like the yeah. bad, yeah. You just knew. And so we were just waiting for, they, they, usually it was a new member of the cast, like a... I remember when Benjamin Bratt was all, you know, was on. Oh, when is he going to, you know, he's going to. Yeah, you know that he's, yeah. <laughs> can't trust him. <laughs> uh, and that's usually true with this kind of thing. So you knew that with uh, with uh, with Gumby. And uh, uh, we find out there's this cr- criminal underworld uh, with a uh, run by Sweet Pete, as you said. And there's this other investigator named Kiki Lane. Yeah, who's human. Yes. Yeah. And I think maybe they had like a little too much of her, maybe, if I was gonna give critique. Yeah, she's in a she's in it a lot. I believe she the actress is named Kiki Lane, right? And and uh, I think her character's name is named Ellie. I could oh be yeah, wrong. yeah, yeah. Sorry. But, yeah, um, Ellie. Oh no, you're good. Yeah. And so they're trying to find this bootlegging facility because uh Flounder has been the latest victim. <laughs> uh, got behind on his krill payments or <laughs> <laughs> Or flounder. flounder. He smuggled over overseas. Well, it's, they think it's overseas. And I loved when they showed the actual sort of animation studio and you saw them walking through like the Simpsons lot and oh, yeah. uh, and, and all of that. That was really it's cool. So great. Yeah, that was really fun. Very creative. And, uh, and uh, I, I liked, I think it was uh, Dale who says uh, if he's if he's going to make bad movies, he should make them here with me. <laughs> uh, so it becomes the case of the missing Monty. Uh, and he says, it's a placeholder name. I'm open to ideas. 
<laughs> yeah, Alfie's kind of, you know, again, like, it's probably like a lot of Hollywood in, inside jokes too, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah, and you have, uh, Dale has this whole room of, he uh, calls it the crime lab, but it's it's really the nostalgia. And, uh, and they said, and they throughout the movie they refer to different episodes. So like episode forty five, pretending yes. to be a rat, <laughs> and uh, and throughout. And I don't know the show well enough to know. Okay, that was a correct. Yeah, exactly. Reference. I don't either. I don't yeah. either. But it cracked me up. Mm-hmm. And there were just tons of funny jokes. Like I love the fact when they're like storming the warehouse and they're like the, 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 with it, with battering uh, rams. They uh, they have actual rams, you know, thanks. <laughs> and then the mission chip possible when they're going through all of the uh, the lasers. Oh, and, funny. Uh, and that's when uh, Chip gets the Snoopy ear. <laughs> He's like, I've got a Snoopy ear. <laughs> <laughs> and that was an interesting thing that I read that they were originally thinking about using Charlie Brown instead of Peter Pan. Uh and oh. yeah, but they just the licensing was way way easier for Peter Pan. Right. So that's why they went with it. And you know, some people have said that that they were bothered by the fact that Bobby Driscoll the Action, the, the live action actor, the voice or the voice actor, Who's the voice actor for the Peter, Peter Pan, Pan went on to lead a pretty sad life. Yeah, and the thing is, is that I don't think that I don't think that they were thinking about that at all. I think that they were just trying to pick a male uh, hero in their early catalog of characters that would work for this uh that's that's a human character that would work that would be iconic enough that they people would know enough and like i said i feel like one of the only other ones you could pick would be pinocchio uh but uh but maybe that even gets complicated i don't know but i don't think that they were talking about bobby driscoll at all i don't think that's what they were meaning to i don't think that's what they were implying this is a completely different character a completely i don't think this was commentary on his life or anything like that i think they were just taking peter pan which has been told so many times i think it's a little bit of a stretch to say this is out of all of the peter pans and all of the like i think it's a stretch to say that this is the one thing that they're talking about and to get offended, but yeah. that's just me. I know. I agree with you. I, I, uh, uh I didn't, I, I, I didn't think it really necessary about Bobby Driscoll. I mean, I, I, I just thought it was a funny context that, that worked, that, that would really work to further mm-hmm. the plot. And sure. I guess there could be some similarities to, to Bobby Driscoll, but it seemed to me it was, it was more like, uh, Macaulay Culkin, yeah, or something. You know that that uh, this a childhood actor that was so popular and then uh, really couldn't get work once the once they got you know once they were old you know aging. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, that's yeah. just me. He said the director. He said that yeah, that was the idea. There it was that it was child actors that were not able to continue acting uh, and uh, applying that to cartoons. He said. Schaefer said that there was no intent to make fun of any specific actor. Yeah. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. I don't, you know, yeah, well, like with Bobby Driscoll, I mean, I know he had this really tragic life, but I don't know how much of that was related to him not getting work. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I, that part I just I don't know. Yeah, and, either again, way. And I didn't feel like yeah. I'm with you. I disagree with you completely. It just too. seemed like a, a leap to me. Of yeah, again, it's been played so many times. It's such an iconic character. Uh, so I I didn't have any problem with that. I know other people do, and you can put your thoughts in the comments if you want. We'd love to hear it. But uh, but uh, we have uh, the um, uh, I did like the joke that. Uh, the Paul Rudd Ant uh, Ant Man in A U N T Man, Aunt Man, uh, ah. that being the superpower was being really charming to aunts, <laughs> like aunts. So. <laughs> that was really funny. I thought. Funny. Uh, I also liked the little joke where they said the evil Jack Skellington's been embezzling from his charity for years. <laughs> 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 and, uh, I mean, the jokes, they're like nonstop. You yeah. Know? And again, one of the things I liked about it, too. Is that these, yeah. These it was really funny. Uh, and you also have the, uh, of course, that we get the reveal of Gumby. That that was not a big surprise. Yeah, no surprise there. But I loved Gadget when he, she says, we love you, but we can't invest in any more of your independent movies. <laughs> <laughs> That was funny. <laughs> I feel like that must have been just an inside joke with the uh, the Lonely Island guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they probably get exactly. asked all the time <laughs> to invest in people's, you know, their comedy friends or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so Zipper's the stay-at-home dad. And uh, uh, and uh, he we get a scene where Dale throws his phone away. And he's like, I'm immediately regretting throwing the phone. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought little moments like that were pretty funny. Yeah. It can't be the same. And, can't, and, can't, and they were just not stop. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they get pretty close. They're going to bootleg Chip. But then Chip is saved. And then we get a scene with Dale saving Ellie. But, uh, and then... The uh, the bootleg she- machine is blown up, and you see a little shot of Disneyland fireworks from the thing <laughs> with Whitney Wish Upon a Star. That made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, I didn't really understand. So there was this giant cat that chases them. Is that in a ref? Was that a reference? I couldn't even find on Wikipedia or anything. It was just well, it seemed to me that one of the, wasn't one of the bad guys in the Chip and Dale animated series a cat. Oh, maybe so. Okay. Um, it seems to me, and I'm honestly thinking that it's Fat Cat, but uh, um, okay. I didn't know if that was a, just a character I wasn't aware of, and sounds like that's the case. Okay. You know, there is a character named Fat Cat that was part of Chip and Dale mm. uh, Rescue Rangers. I wondered if that was a reference, Rachel, but there, you know, there was there were plenty of jokes that I think I maybe understood, but I can't say that I would like I completely understood the source, mm-hmm. you know, or yeah. the source, the material that I could, I could quote it or you know be accurate about it. Yeah, yeah I'm looking. But at, I loved... I'm looking at Fat Cat right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, that makes sense. And it, I loved the whole, like I said, I loved the whole scene where they walk through Hundred Acre, Hundred Acre Woods and then the Simpsons. And yeah. that was very oh, yeah. fun. Very fun. And uh, they, they're, they're making the bootleg movies here, not overseas. <laughs> and uh, they end up on the Aladdin set. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and we have Gumby getting frozen by Ellie with the fire extinguisher. And uh, and they tr- they're trying to get the birds to come, and so they have Dale keeps hitting Chip <laughs> over and over again <laughs> trying to get the birds to come. That was funny. That's a total Roger Rabbit. And then Ugly Sonic swoops in to save the day. We've got you surrounded. <laughs> <laughs> Ugly Sonic. It was so uh. funny. It was great. Uh, and then. <laughs> Uh, and then Ma- Monty, we find him. He's been dumboed, so he has these big giant ears. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ellie's gonna open her own agency, and uh, we have a little. Uh, we get a moment where uh, Chip tells Dale that he was also very lonely that day. That it wasn't just one sided. They both need yeah, each other. That day, cool, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that was very sweet, and uh, and so 
According to Whip Media, Chippendale Rescue Rangers was the most watched movie across all platforms in the United States during the week of May 20th. So it was definitely a success. And I could picture them making a bunch more of these. I don't see why not. Oh, they set it up. They, they could just, yeah, yeah, they could have so much fun mm-hmm. with that if, 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 they, if they chose to. Yeah. Um, and it won Outstanding Television Movie. Uh, at yeah, the Emmys, at so that was Emmys. exciting. <laughs> I know. Actually, that made me happy. And what me did too. you think about that? Me too. It made me very yeah. happy. Uh, I thought that it was exciting for a animated film to win, uh, and it, it was exciting that it was something that was a comedy to win, you know, up against, yeah. like, heavy TV movies. Yeah. Um, and then also that... Uh, that it was something that I think took some risks and and was different and uh, and a lot of fun. So I was happy to see that it, it that it won, and uh, and it's too bad that it, it wasn't something that because at animation is film they have done some of those straight to streaming films on the big screen. So it's too bad it, there isn't some way that we could see it on the big screen because I would yeah I would love it that. would be fun I would, love, I would love to see this on the big screen too that it's would be really we, fun. We'd, even see more gags and mm-hmm. things that you know were added into this that yeah. maybe you might have missed just because it was on TV. Yeah. And the you mentioned Andy Samberg, uh, but then also John Mulaney. Uh, yes, is plays Chip. Chip. Uh, and then we also have Will Arnett. Uh, Who's playing Sweet Pete? <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, Eric Bana, uh, Dennis. Yeah, as Monterey Jack, right? As Monty. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dennis Habert, Keegan Michael Key, who I f- I feel like he is in every single animated film. Keegan Mike, Keegan Mike, excuse me, Keegan Michael. I messed up his name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Keegan Michael Key is so busy. I know he's just like he's like he's in everything. Yeah, especially uh, a- animated films. <laughs> he's just yeah. like it's not. Yeah, is it I really animated say, yeah. if he's not in it? I don't know. Right, right. <laughs> uh, so then also Tress McNeil, who's a legend. Uh, you had Seth Rogen as this. Uh, he, uh, he was this. Uh, that was very. We didn't talk about the uh, the motion capture era <laughs> world that they end up in the Uncanny yeah. Valley, and, uh, and then there's this uh, Viking kind of character. Yeah, who's like out of a Robert Zemeckis yeah, movie. <laughs> Which was especially funny, obviously, because Zemeckis was the uh, director of Roger Rabbit. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so then they also, and then had J.K. Simmons as like a Gumby, and uh, and then they had uh, um, Jim. Uh, um, they had Jim Cummings playing uh, Darkwing Duck. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Coming back and a couple other characters, I think. Well, see, and I, uh, Jim Cummings—he was the voice I noticed of Fat Cat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. And probably uh, I mean many others, mm-hmm. two other characters, but but yeah. yeah, yeah. So I thought it was really funny. I was thoroughly entertained. I again, sometimes when you watch a movie a second time, especially if you had low expectations, and so you second time you're like, well, I like it as much because it won't be this surprising. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes with comedies, once you've heard the jokes once, there's really not a lot of replay value in the jokes. But right. in this case, I felt like because the animation was so fun and there were so many jokes that mm-hmm. you uh, the, that I got more out of it the second time, especially taking notes, that there were jokes that I didn't notice the first time that I got on the second time. And I really just, I was more, I found it more endearing the second time, the relationship between Chip and Dale and their friendship and 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 uh, everything so that was very sweet and overall i was just thoroughly entertained by it i really enjoyed it so you know rachel ditto just perfectly said i've because my i had the same experience too yeah uh, i've watched it twice the second time was as fun or even i enjoyed it even more mm-hmm. and and uh just yeah it's really really a blast yeah so it's... happy that they were able to make it and and uh <laughs> and yeah. then we can enjoy it. It's definitely it's in my top ten of the year, and I've heard some people say, "Oh, it's not as funny as like the Lord Miller movies," 
But I don't know. I guess I respectfully disagree. I, I think those, like, the Lego movie and stuff, like, can be hilarious, and I, I really enjoy it. Uh, but uh, but I think this was on that level. I really do. I do, so. too. I thought, I, I thought this really, movie really delivered. Mm-hmm. So let us know what you think uh, in the comment section. We'd love to hear what you think. Uh, if you like it, don't like it, uh, just be respectful and nice if you don't like it uh, in the comments. And uh, Stanford, how can people find you? On Twitter, I'm at Stanford Clark, and I have a movie podcast and blog at moviespastandpresent.com. Great. And uh, you can find our entire playlist of the Talking Disney podcast on there. And we're, our next episode is going to be on Strange World, which is so fun. So exciting. I know. I'm excited. <laughs> So you definitely want to check out all of those episodes. They're really fun. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That helps us a lot. And you can find me on Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also, make sure you check out the Hallmarkies podcast. Lots of fun stuff going on over there. And uh, yeah, we'll be excited to hear what you think. And uh, we'll be excited for Strange World. And we'll talk to you all later. Bye, everyone.